Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day everybody. From wherever you are watching us from, this is Chatufa TV Productions. Please subscribe, like, share and continue to enjoy the discussions that we have on this channel. Today we are looking at uh, an assessment that has been done on the nation of Zimbabwe and how Zimbabwe is being viewed internationally in comparison with other countries and other nations. It is very saddening that each time that we talk about the nation of Zimbabwe and exposing exactly what is happening in the nation, we have quite many people who want to purport that we are haters of the nation to the point that we have a government that goes on all the way to make legislation like the patriotic bill claiming that there are people that are speaking bad about the nation people that hate their nation people that don't want to speak good about their nation but honestly speaking you can only speak good when there is good that is happening you cannot have an oppressive people an oppressive government force people to speak good about the nation zimbabwe has emerged as the most miserable country on renowned Steve Hanks Annual Misery Index, which judges nations on mainly economic conditions. The African country that has surpassed the war-torn nations like Ukraine, Syria, Sudan, has majorly been plagued with skyrocketing inflation, which touched 243.8% last year. A total of 157 countries were analyzed for the rankings as per the New York Post. Other countries that are also uh, ranked were Venezuela, Syria, Lebanon, Sudan, Argentina, Yemen, Ukraine, Cuba, Turkey, Sri Lanka, Haiti, Angola, Tonga, and Ghana. These are some of the countries. And out of the 15 countries, it seems Zimbabwe has been topping the list as the most miserable country in the world. Zimbabwe has been ranked at this damning rank thanks to the stunning inflation, high unemployment, high lending rates, and anemic real GDP growth. Zimbabwe clocks in as the world's most miserable country in the Hank 2023 Annual Misery Index. It claims that the political party of Emerson Mnangagwa, the ZANU-PF, operates more like a political mafia than a political party. It added that its policies have resulted in massive misery for the country. Last year, the country saw annual inflation at 243.8% and lending rates at 131.8%. So this is the situation that we find our nation in. In attachment to this analysis that has been done by great economists of the world, and how Zimbabwe has been found to be topping the list of the most miserable countries. I have also decided that we need to look at what is called the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Maslow talks about very important issues about human existence. And we are going to be looking into this theory and see how it applies to the nation of Zimbabwe. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a motivational theory in psychology comprising a five-tier model of human needs often depicted as hierarchical levels within a pyramid. Needs lower down in the hierarchy must be satisfied before individuals can attend to needs higher up. From the bottom of the hierarchy upwards, the needs are psychological, safety, love and belonging, esteem and self-actualization. So Maslow looks at human needs and he comes up with a pyramid in which he staggers human needs as we go up the hierarchy. 
we are going to be looking at these in comparison to Zimbabwe and see how much Maslow's hierarchy of needs is actually in agreement with the assessment that economists like Steve Henke have done upon the nation of Zimbabwe. We want to look at this pyramid of needs as according to Maslow. From the bottom, number one, Maslow begins to talk about the physiological needs. And he says these are biological requirements for human survival that include air, food, drink, shelter, clothing, warmth, sex, and sleep. He's concentrating here on things that are needed by a human being, specifically things that are biological requirements, things that have to do with the human body. And he says these are the most basic needs. These are the very first things that every human being would need. Without these things, somebody is not living a normal life. So when you don't have clean air, when you don't have food, look at the cost of food. Look at the agricultural sector that has collapsed and the food is so scarce in Zimbabwe. Many families are starving. Many families can't afford three meals in a day. And this exactly is already affecting the biological, the physiological needs of the people of Zimbabwe. Shelter. Let's look at shelter. This one is one of the greatest challenges that we have in Zimbabwe. We have had the government destroying people's shelters, the issues of Murambatrina. We have had people that have lost their shelters in the farms. We have had also of people that are in squatter camps, people that have nowhere to go. And cities continue to be overpopulated while the government is not able to provide enough accommodation for the people. And this need is actually a very biological and basic need. And yet in Zimbabwe, it is not so. Clothing is the same issue. We see now that many people, almost three quarters of the people, are not able to go and buy clothing that they need right from the shops. Most people are surviving on second-hand clothing because the salaries are too low, the inflation is too high, the cost of clothing that they may require is unaffordable in Zimbabwe. When we talk about warmth, it still goes hand in glove with the issues of clothing. And you look at companies that used to manufacture blankets in the country, they've all shut down, they've all closed down. And now everything has to be imported from outside. And when it's imported, the prices will go up. You'd find that children, especially in the winter, they have parents who are not able to provide enough blankets, enough cotton clothing during the time of winter because the production has gone down and the cost of living is continually rising. We'd want to look also at uh, the issue of sex. How many times have we been talking about families that are disintegrating? There's a lot of divorces that are going through in the nation because of hardship. Poverty breaks marriages. Many families were separated. You'd find that the other parent had to go into the diaspora while the other one remained behind. And that has caused a division. And you'd find that because of the physiological need of sex, many people who were married, who wanted to make sure that they keep their homes or their marriages intact, they found themselves tempted and they engaged in extramarital affairs. Families had to break down, divorces had to continue, and children will suffer every time that there's a marriage breakdown. The issue of sleep, people in Zimbabwe are not sleeping. People are looking for survival and each time that there is not enough in the home, men tend to overwork, men tend to be looking for money and they would even compromise the time of sleep. And this is what is happening. There are people that are working 24 hours. There are people that are going into the mining holes and they will spend their nights there and this is not healthy for human beings. If these needs are not satisfied, the human body cannot function optimally. Maslow considered physiological needs the most important as all the other needs become secondary until these needs are met. So before we can talk about the next level of needs, the first most physiological and biological requirements of human survival, they need to be satisfied. But the government of Zimbabwe has made sure that through their policies, they have taken away that facility and it's no longer a human right in Zimbabwe. 
So when you hear the international community speaking about the issues of human rights, these are some of the human rights that are failing to be provided to the nation because of poor policies of the ruling elites and the ruling uh, ZANU-PF government. We go to the next stage of needs, which is the stage number two, the safety needs. These include protection from elements, security, order, law, stability, freedom from fear. When we look at protection, automatically we can agree that there is no protection for civilians in Zimbabwe. As long as you are a citizen in Zimbabwe, you are not safe. Right now, as I am sharing with you this information, I am not safe in Zimbabwe. Because somebody right now would be against what I am doing, why I am educating the nation. And somebody would want to see how they can silence me. So there is no protection. And the ones that are supposed to protect the people are the ones that are attacking. The police that is supposed to protect the citizens is the one that is used to attack citizens. So the issue of protection, the issue of security is not there. Order is not there. There is disorder everywhere in Zimbabwe. Look at how the systems of government work. There is disorder. You no longer know who to trust. You no longer know exactly who operates which way. Everybody can just do anything. There is lawlessness and there are people that have taken the law into their hands. And it brings me also to the issue of the law. The law is supposed to be protecting the citizens, but in Zimbabwe, the law is being used to victimize citizens. We see people like Job Scala in prison without being allowed to post bail, while the law states that categorically that a citizen has a right to post bail so they can be coming to the courts from their house. Stability when we talk about stability, that totally is not there. The country is not stable. Anytime anything can happen, anytime there can be an eruption, the stability also in the economy is not there. This is why you find that the policies can be changed. People can bank US dollars today. Tomorrow government will wake up and say, we have taken all Nostra accounts. There's no one who still has US dollar in their accounts. We have converted everything into Zimbabwean dollar. And people lost finances. That is instability. And stability is a basic need that is needed in the life of people. Freedom from fear. If it is fear, this one is the greatest in Zimbabwe. This is why even demonstrations are not possible in Zimbabwe anymore. Because ZANU-PF has succeeded in inflicting fear in the lives of people. When they shot people and when they killed people, they demonstrated that this is what we would do if ever you would want to demonstrate against us. And up to now, we find that citizens are no longer able to exercise their democratic right enshrined in the constitution. It is a right for citizens to demonstrate peacefully to express their dissatisfaction to the government peacefully through demonstrations. We go to the next level. Love and belonging needs. After physiological needs and safety needs have been fulfilled, the third level of human needs is social and involves feelings of belongingness. The need for interpersonal relationships motivates behavior. Examples include friendship, intimacy, trust, and acceptance, receiving and giving affection and love, affiliating, being part of a group, family, friends, or work. All these, when we look at the context of Zimbabwe, they are being infringed by the government. For example, trust. Right now, we have a trust issue with ZANPF. No matter what ZANPF wants to do, right now, if they would want to do a genuine thing, a truthful thing, it will not succeed in Zimbabwe because automatically there's a trust issue. Citizens no longer trust them because they've lied for so long. They've uh, shifted goalposts for so long to the point that citizens have lost any atom of trust in them. Acceptance. You see, people need to be accepted. And in Zimbabwe, citizens of Zimbabwe have a problem with the issue of acceptance. We are not being accepted by our own government as citizens. We are told that we are puppets of the West. We are told that we are regime change agents. And we are told that we are enemies. Emerson Nangagwa always speaks about down with enemies, pasne mantu, meaning that he sees those that don't agree with him as enemies. So we are not accepted as people who have got a different view. Receiving and giving affection 
is a basic need that is needed in the life of a human being. And love. We don't see love that the government is giving to the people. And because of that, people will end up even failing to give love to one another. When you find a government that does not care whether hospitals have medicine, whether roads have been made perfect, whether sewer system is working perfectly, whether electricity is being supplied in clean water to the people, and a government which does not care about that, and yet they can take five million, plow it in by elections themselves, if just caused unnecessarily, that does not show love. It is a sign of a loveless leadership and a loveless government. And these are the rights the human needs citizens of Zimbabwe are being deprived from. Affiliating and being part of a group, this is a problem automatically because once somebody identifies themselves either, for example, with a political party and you decide to say, I am part of the opposition, automatically you are an enemy. You are supposed to be crushed like lies, like what uh, Vice President Chiwenga said at one point. So when you consider other people as lies and who are supposed to be destroyed, who are supposed to be crushed, that is depriving somebody's need to affiliate and to belong to a group. And each time that people want to gather, for example, for political purposes, you'd find police stopping people from gathering, burning rallies. That is a basic need human basic need that is being infringed by this kind of government. We go to the next level. Esteem needs. Needs which must be classified into two categories. Number one, esteem for oneself, dignity, achievement, mastery, independence. And number two, the desire for reputation or respect from others, e.g. status, prestige. These Maslow indicated that the need for respect and reputation is most important for children and adolescents and precedes real self-esteem or dignity. So these are the other needs as we continue to go up the hierarchy that are needed. Everyone can agree with me that in Zimbabwe, there is no self-esteem. Self-esteem has been killed. Zimbabweans no longer have the pride in themselves confidence in themselves. You just find people walking empty because dignity has been taken from them. And when dignity and self-esteem is taken away from an individual, the individual does not perform. There is no achievement. This is why you find that there is no growth. People are not developing. People are not becoming masters of their own lives. They are not being creative. Independence is also very important where somebody can do their thing without interference. But the problem we are having now is you cannot run business in Zimbabwe successfully without being interfered with by ZANU-PF. Everyone who is successful as a business person somehow will have to have a link or a connection to some ZANU-PF individual, individuals or ZANU-PF as a whole. And you cannot start companies, you cannot have a mining claim, you cannot have a farm in Zimbabwe, you cannot you know, bring an idea without ZANU-PF coming to put their fingers within it and see if you are fit according to their eyes for you to proceed. So independence is not there. We need to be independent, we need to do things as citizens without looking back and being afraid that somebody might be coming after you. The desire for reputation or respect from others. Everybody needs to have a reputation. Everybody needs to be respected. But this government does not respect anybody. When people spoke to Emerson Nangagwa and they told him about prices going up, what did he say? He says, you also have to raise whatever you have. If you don't have your own thing to raise the price, then you can raise up your trouser or pull up your trouser, whatever it is that he said. So there is no status. There is no prestige anymore in the citizens. Number five, self-actualization is the highest. This one is the top part of the hierarchy, top part of the pyramid. When you manage to fulfill all these needs, right from the physiological needs, as we go up and up and up, you would find that you come up with a nation that has a high level of self-actualization, where people become proud of being who they are. You find Americans... They are so proud to say, I am American. Even when they are faced with a threat, they will say, remember, I'm an American. Just saying that, it means something in the whole world. 
So it, that is what is called self-actualization, realizing personal potential, self-fulfillment, seeking personal growth and peak experiences, a desire to become everything one is capable of becoming. When you get to this level of for needs, this is the level that ZANPF wants to force citizens of Zimbabwe to operate from. When they put this draconian patriotic bill, Monica Mtswangwa was saying on News Africa, Zimbabweans are supposed to be proud to be Zimbabweans. They are supposed to be proud of their nation. You don't force people to do that. That comes on its own through all other lower needs being satisfied. So you don't need to tell somebody to develop potential of self-fulfillment. You don't teach somebody that it comes naturally when all other needs have been satisfied. You do discover that the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a lower need will promote the higher need. Whenever the lower need is satisfied, the higher need will automatically find itself beginning to take effect. And this is how it happens. This is why nations that are successful, nations that are progressive, nations that are up there the ladder, it is because they've understood the importance of even beginning from the physiological, the very biological requirements for human survival. Unfortunately, we have a government that does not even understand all that. We have a government that is just good at politicking. We have a government that is just vindictive, so stubborn, so uncaring. They don't care about anything except themselves. Because of that, Zimbabwe can never rise at the hands of ZANU-PF. Zimbabwe can never change as long as ZANU-PF still is on the throne. Until we will have different leaders, we have a different thinking process, a different scope of frame of mind, we will never be able to move. We are stuck because of all this. So we need to make sure that the social order is taken back, is turned upside down and inside out. So we can now begin to have, beginning with the physiological needs, that a government must care about those. Then the nation will begin to form itself into a progressive, self-actualized, self-realized, self-potential, self-fulfilled nation. And then the nation is going to grow. And this is the nation that we are viewing for us that are looking into the future. I answered a certain individual in the last video who was saying, you are just dreaming. There is no such new Zimbabwe that is coming. Zanupia shall be staying forever. And I answered the individual and I said, those with natural eyes will say the way you are saying. Only those with eyes of the spirit who can see things that many don't see. I can tell you, we are seeing a great Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe that shall be fulfilling all the five stages of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and Zimbabwe will become one of the greatest nations, the Switzerland of Africa, as I'm always saying. Oh, keep hope alive, never be discouraged by what they do or what they say. The great Zimbabwe is coming, and we are coming out of this mud, we are coming out of these doldrums, and freedom is coming, and we shall celebrate the pains of the past we shall forget. The day that this great Zimbabwe comes, we shall be like those that are dreaming. Till we meet again, put your comment in the section box. God bless you and God bless Zimbabwe.